Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nick Morgan. I am the uh, distance education specialist here at the Administrative Office of the Courts. I work under Barbara. Most of you know me or have seen my name on an email um, or a virtual court session over the last year or so. Um, also with us today is uh, Wyatt Scharf from uh, Zoom, uh, Zoom for Government. Um, he's going to be helping me out. Um, just a couple of questions we may have watching the Q&A. Um, feel free to post a question in that Q&A. We'll get to it either in the middle or at the end. Um, I am going to share my screen for most of this and uh, go over the steps that we need to take, uh, that each user needs to take to, in order to transition from Zoom commercial to Zoom for government. Um, so first, you know, you may all be sitting there wondering, you know, why, why are we switching to uh, Zoom for government? Um, the simple answer is that it's just more safe and more secure for your meetings and your hearings. Um, and your safety and privacy of, of those hearings is our top priority, um, both in communications and in the IT department. Um, just remember, though, that this is a, a completely different platform, although it still is under the Zoom brand, it is a different platform than Zoom commercial. Um, so as we discuss this transition, um, just please remember that this transition is important because it is a different platform uh, than what you've been on the last nine months. So first of all, uh, we're going to talk about making the switch. Um, so you'll receive an email. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Everyone will receive an email. Um, it'll look similar to this here. Um, the most important part of this email is this big blue button right here that says activate your Zoom account. Um, once you hit that button, then you'll be taken to a registration page. Um, I've already registered my account um, about a month ago. So uh, actually watching the registration, uh, I won't be able to do that, but it is extremely simple. Um, name, email, title, organization. Uh, and most of that is, is carried over from um, information we already have uh, from the, our, the original Zoom client we use now. Next, um, we need to talk about the desktop client. So in order to um, use all those safety and security measures that ZoomGov provides, um, the easiest way to get the most out of the platform is to make sure that you have the desktop client for Zoom. Um, I know some of you have it, but not everyone has it. Um, and we need to make sure that as many people as we can get to download it um, still downloads it. Now, that means you can still click the link in an email to open a, a Zoom meeting. That really doesn't change. Um, the only thing that will change is that when it asks you to open Zoom meetings, you'll click open Zoom meetings after you click the email link. and the Zoom desktop client will run that and fully protect you um, and provide you um, with all the added features that Zoom government uh, delivers for us. So in order to get to this page, you'll go to zoomgov.com slash download. And I've already, um, obviously we're already here. Um, Wyatt can put that, I've opened the chat. Wyatt can put that in our chat as well for us. Um, and once on this page, you have a couple different download options, but the main one that we'll be using is the Zoom client for meetings download. So we'll simply hit download. It will go into your downloads bar on whatever browser you're using. I prefer Chrome. It's what I'm using today. Um, and then once it's downloaded, just double click it and it will install the Zoom desktop client. You can then, um, once it's installed, this is really the only tricky part of this with the desktop client. You have two options up here in this, um, right beside the sign in in this drop down menu. You want to make sure that you've chosen the Zoom Go one. Um, if you choose the Zoom.us, it'll be your commercial license, and those expire March 31st. Um, so you need to make sure that Zoom Gov is chosen. Then you can sign in just like normal, and you can continue from there. And then for most of you, um, the, if you already have the desktop client, nothing changes as far as the um, platform itself um, in the desktop client. But we do ask that as many of you can um, 
please download that client. It really helps to make sure that we have the most security and privacy that we can provide, uh, the Zoom can, that can provide from the platform uh, through the desktop client. Why am I explaining that correctly? Uh, you 100% you are, Nick. The one thing that I'll recommend is if you already have the Zoom client installed on your computer and you're, you do not see that drop down, um, but the team does have a document that'll walk you through exactly how to enable. Uh, yeah. That. And we can share that out. Um, I, I know that's already in the plans with David Thomas. Um, all right. So once you've signed up for your Zoom for government account, um, your profile on Zoom for government should look something like this. Very, very, very similar to um, your normal Zoom commercial license. Um, the only thing I will add is that the web address has changed. So normally when you go to your Zoom account right now for commercial, uh, you usually go to zoom.us. Uh, the new web address will be zoomgov.com. So www.zoomgov.com. The landing page um, looks something like this, and it should look the same for everyone. And then just simply click sign in. My credentials are already put in. Um, and this is part of that security. Um, let's make sure I can hit enough palm trees. There we go. All right, so this should look pretty similar to everyone. Um, this is just the basic Zoom uh, profile. And uh, from here, you should be able to start scheduling your meetings. Um, you know, you can schedule out as far as you want. Um, obviously, um, if you've had a picture there before, you'll have to add your picture back. Um, and from there, you're pretty much done with the actual transition as far as getting your profile set up and making sure that you have, um, you know, with the desktop client, you have the security you need. Um, so that is just the, the bare bones, how to transition to Zoom government. What I want to um, sort of stress is that, uh, remember earlier, I said that this is a, a completely different platform. Uh, and that means that all of your settings will be reset to default. So if you're used to using breakout rooms and uh, the chat box and co-hosting, um, for some of you live streaming, um, all of that is reset to default. So you probably turned it on back in like April or May when we first issued accounts, you'll have to return all that on. Uh, and the way that we do that, you come into your Zoom Gov profile, go to settings over here on the left-hand side of the screen. And then you can just scroll all the way through this and there's a ton of settings. Um, so the waiting room uh, is pretty close to the top. We want to turn that back on for most of us. Um, I know a lot of you judges um, will keep, you know, you'll have five or six lawyers on a docket. You'll only let one or two in on a time when it's their time for the case. So the waiting room is a, a pretty big part of that. Um, I keep the meeting passcodes on, webinar, pass, webinar passcodes, just an added layer of security that um, is great. Um, trying to scroll down and find. the few things I've changed. So there's the chat. I know that's pretty popular among everyone. You can turn that on or off. Um, there's private chat. Um, there's the co-hosting. Uh, and, and these settings have different um, or sort of subsections. You can just go to the subsections and scroll through the subsection, or you can just start at the top and go all the way down. Um, so everyone's gonna be a little bit different on this just simply because your settings may be, your needs may be different than others' needs. Um, I have it set to the way I need it. I have live streaming turned on. I live stream every week for the appellate court. Um, and so I keep live streaming turned on. Um, and then this has a bunch of my webinar settings um, as well. You have your virtual backgrounds here that you can turn back on. So please, please, please uh, just go in make sure that anything you had in your old Zoom for commercial license turned on or off for that matter is set back to the way that you like it before you host your first Zoom meeting on Zoom for government. Because once you turn that meeting on, it's gonna stick with whatever uh, you have until the next one. You're not gonna get um, any added feature 
during that first meeting that, you know, oh, I forgot to turn chat on. Well, that's fine. You can go turn chat on, but it's not going to be available in the meeting that you currently have up. Um, if you do everything beforehand, that first meeting will have everything you need um, and you'll be set to go. Um, so a lot of you have, the next thing I want to get into is a lot of you have um, hearings and uh, meetings uh, recorded to the cloud in Zoom commercial. Um, so everything in the cloud um, will go away um, as of March 31st. So everything that will that you've recorded to the cloud in your Zoom commercial license will need to be downloaded to a local computer. And I'll show you how to do that. So I've switched over to my Zoom commercial account and you can have both accounts up until March 31st um, if you're under an AOC license. If you're not under an AOC license and you're with a county that's paying for your Zoom license, this uh, transition doesn't necessarily apply to you. Um, but if you're under a state AOC account, this absolutely applies to you. So we'll go to zoom.us, log into our profile. Um, and it's really simple. You just go to recordings. Here's all of my recordings. Um, and then you just go to the side of whatever recording you want to download. You click the more button and you click download. And then it comes down here. Um, I know that you can also actually click on the recording itself and you can grab all three files and there's your actual video file that you can download um, as well. And actually I would probably do it that way just so you can physically see the recording uh, before you download it. You can also select audio only to download um, and if there was any shared screen, you can download that, that too. And then you can also download the chat file if you need it. Um, so you will have to go one at a time and download each recording that you want. And that needs to be downloaded to a local computer. It could be a desktop uh, or laptop. Um, but please remove those from or download those uh, as you need them and what you need. Um, because March 31st will be the last day that we were making those available. Um, so the about, only the last thing, and then after that, we can get into the Q&A uh, and more discussion with Wyatt. Um, the last thing that we'll talk about, I'm gonna go back to my Zoom for government account, is your meetings that are scheduled past March 31st. So any meeting scheduled past March 31st on Zoom commercial, the, the current Zoom license we have, um, will not, will, they will go away um, as of March 31st. So, you know, if you have a court date scheduled for May that you've already scheduled in Zoom, you best practice will be that just um, reschedule that just as soon as possible while you have both Zoom licenses. Um, you have, uh, you know, again, till the end of the month, um, just take a day and please reschedule those meetings in Zoom.gov. You'll get a new invitation with a .gov um, on the end of it. And it, it should be just that simple. Just reschedule everything you had scheduled out any, for, any further than March 31st. Um, and then you should be good after that. Um, I'm gonna stop share. I'm sure we've had a few questions, um, but as far as the transition, that's really, you do those things um, and you'll be right back to normal. Um, obviously just remember zoomgov.com is our new URL to go to to find your, your web profile um, and uh, you know reschedule those meetings and uh, reset your settings and uh, download your recorded um, meetings from the old account. And we should be uh, pretty good from there. So let's get into the Q&A. So that's from, is there anything that hasn't been answered? Sorry, I'm starting from the, Uh, so when will we be getting the uh, upgraded email? Um, 
that should be coming either today or tomorrow, I believe. Um, and from there, then you should uh, be able to register just like I was uh, showing you with the activation button. Um, we're also going to send out a um, sort of a frequently asked questions uh, from, uh, from the AOC. Um, a lot of it covers what I just covered. It's just a, a text version of it. Um, and, and that will hopefully help a lot of you who maybe not remember everything we went over today or just need a, a reminder of, of what we did. Um, and that'll be available uh, to you via email that should be coming from Barbara Peck. Looks like there's a question. Wendy, do you wanna address that to everyone else um, about the, the personal ID or why you can probably address that too? Uh, I just, uh, I put that answer in the chat as well, um, but the personal getting ID and password will change, uh, but you can always go to your web profile. You're only logging in at zoomgov.com and you can edit your personal ID as well as your password. Um, 